All right. I'll just go first since I'm already sharing my screen and I'll go through this first article and then uh, whoever wants to hop on next, we can, they can do the next one. All right, so introducing JavaScript object, objects. In JavaScript, most things are objects from core JavaScript features like strings and arrays to the browser APIs built on top of JavaScript. You can even create your own objects to encapsulate related functions and variables into efficient packages and act as handy data containers. The object-based nature of JavaScript is important to understand if you want to go further with your knowledge of the language, therefore we've provided this module to help you. Here we teach object theory and syntax in detail, then look at how to create your own objects. Prerequisites. Before starting this module, you should have some familiar familiarity with HTML and CSS. We advise to work through the introduction to HTML and introduction to CSS modules before starting on JavaScript. You should also have some familiarity with JavaScript basics before looking at JavaScript objects in detail. Before attempting this module, work through JavaScript first steps and JavaScript building blocks. Note, if you are working on a computer slash tablet slash other device where you don't have the ability to create your own files, you could try out most of the code examples in an online coding program such as JSBin or Thimble. All right, so start off here with object basics. Jav JavaScript object basics. In this article, we'll look at fundamental JavaScript object syntax and revisit some JavaScript features that we've already seen earlier in the course, reiterating the fact that many of the features you've already dealt with are objects. Prerequisites, uh, basic computer literacy, a basic understanding of HTML and CSS, and familiarity with JavaScript basics. Objective, to understand the basic theory behind object-oriented programming, how this relates to JavaScript, most things are objects, and how to start working with JavaScript objects. All right, so object basics. An object is a collection of related data and or functionality, which usually consists of several variables and functions, which are called properties and methods when they are inside objects. Let's work through an example to understand what they look like. Um, hold on one second. Uh, can everyone mute their mic if they're not talking? Someone has like some feedback that I'm hearing. Oh, it stopped, okay. All right, so to begin with, make a local copy of our uh, oojs.html file. This contains very little a script element for us to write our source code into. We'll use this as a basis for exploring basic object syntax. While working with this example, you should have your developer tools JavaScript console open and ready to type in commands. So. Uh, I think uh, it'll probably just be easier. Just need. Actually, I think I'll probably just put the JavaScript they want into CodePen and then show it on the console instead of making a bunch of files. All right. As with many things in JavaScript, creating an object often begins with defining and initializing a variable. Try entering the following below in the JavaScript code that's already in your file, then save and refreshing. Uh, oh wait, does anyone need me to wait for them while they, uh, if they're actually making the file and open it up in like VS Code or something? Because I can wait a couple minutes while everyone uh, makes the file and gets ready if they need. All right. Okay. 
keep going. And if anyone needs me to slow down or stop, just let me know. So you enter person into your JavaScript console and press the enter button, you should get the following result, object, object. All right, so. Person, yeah. Shows that person is an object and right now it's just an empty object. Congratulations, you've just created your first object. Job done, <laughs> but this is an empty object so we can't really do much with it. Let's update our object to look like this. So, and so it looks like they give it a name key with a value of an array with Bob and Smith, an age key with a value of 32, a gender key with a uh, a value of the string male interests with a value of an array with music and skiing in it, uh, a bio key with a value that's a function that creates an alert that says this first person name plus a space, this last name is, so it just says the person's name is this year's old and he likes, and then it uh, pays their interest. And then the greeting is also uh, has a value that's a function that's an alert that's uh, just an alert that says, hi, I'm Bob, or whatever the name would be in that case. After saving and refreshing, try entering some of the following into the JavaScript console on your browser's dev tools. All right, so person name, should give us Bob Smith because that's what it's. And so that's how you're gonna access any of these. You would just use person dot and then whatever the property you want. So name zero is gonna be the first index in the array. So it should just show up as Bob. If we put in the console, yep, just Bob. The person age showed 32, because that's what age is. Interest one should show the second interest in the array, which would be skiing. Uh, the bio will actually execute the function, so let's see what it says. Bob Smith is 32 years old. He likes music and skiing. And then the greeting function should just say, hi, I'm Bob. Hi, I'm Bob, yeah. All right, you have now got some data and functionality inside your object and are now able to access them with some nice simple syntax. Note, if you're having trouble getting this to work, try comparing your code against our version. C O O J S finish.html. Also see it running live here. This live version will give you a blank screen, but that's okay. Again, open your dev tools and try typing in the above commands to see the object structure. So what is going on here? Well, an object is made up of multiple members, each of which has a name, e.g. name and age above, and a value, e.g. Uh, the array Bob Smith and the value 32. Each name value pair must be separated by a comma, and the name and value in each case are separated by a colon. This syntax always follows this pattern, or the syntax always follows this pod pattern. The variable, the object name, uh, the assignment operator, curly brackets followed by a semicolon, and then you have the names, the colon, the value, and then they're separated by commas. The value of an object member can be pretty much anything. In our person object, we've got a string, a number, two arrays, and two functions. The first four items are data items and are referred to as the object's properties. The last two items are functions that allow the object to do something with the data and are referred to as the object's methods. An object like this is referred to as an object literal. We've literally written out the object co contents as we've come to create it. This is in contrast to objects insta instantiated from classes, which we'll look at later on. 
is very common to create an object using an object literal when you want to transfer a series of structured related data items in some manner. For example, sending a request to the server to be put into a database. Sending a single object is much more efficient than sending several items individually, and it's easier to work with than an array when you want to identify individual items by name. Dot notation. Above you access the object's properties and methods using dot notation. The object name person acts as the namespace. It must be entered first to access anything encapsulated inside the object. Next, you write a dot, then the item you want to access. This can be the name of a simple property, an item of an array property, or a call to one of the object's methods. For example, person.age, you could access whatever's there. Person.interest1, you only access the second index of the array. And person.bio, you call the bio method. Sub namespaces. Is it even possible to make the value of an object member another object? For example, try changing the name member from name Bob Smith to name first Bob last Smith, and it's an object. So you can do that pretty easily. First, and one. Bob, and last, I think that was, yeah. so there we made one of the properties inside the person object an object. And so if we, do person dot name now should show an object with first name Bob last Smith. Here we are effectively creating a sub namespace. This sounds complex, but it's but really it is not, is not. To access these items, you just need to chain the extra step onto the end with another dot. Try these in the JS console. So if we wanted to access just the first, we would do person dot name to access the name and then dot first to access just the value in the first property. And that'll just give Bob. And likewise, person dot name dot last will give us Smith. Important, at this point, you also need to go through your method code and change any instances of name zero or name one to name dot first, name dot last. Otherwise, your methods will no longer work. So here, instead of name zero, should be name dot first. Here, name dot last, and should be name dot first. And just to make sure these are still working, I'll do person.bio. Bob Smith is 32 years old. He likes music and skiing, so our method still works. Person.greeting to see if that still works. Hi, I'm Bob. Yep. So everything's working. Bracket notation. There's another way to access object properties using bracket notation. Instead of using these person.age, person.name.first, you can use person and then in brackets the string age or person in brackets the string name and then in a different set of brackets uh, the string first. This looks very similar to how you access the items in an array and is basically the same thing. Instead of using an index number to select an item, you are using the name associated with each member's value. It is no wonder that objects are sometimes called associative arrays. They map strings to values in the same way that arrays map numbers to values. So just to show an example of that, that would be person. And this will be the same thing as doing person.age.
setting object members. So far, we've only looked at retrieving or getting object members. You can also set update the value of object members by simply declaring the member you want to set using dot or bracket notation like this. So this changes the age uh, value to 45, and this changes his the last name value to Cratchit. Try entering the above lines and then getting the members again to see how they've changed like so. All right, so. I'll do person 45. And then change the last name value. So let's see what person dot age is now. And let's see what person dot name dot last is. And so since we change that, that'll also change uh, everything, how our methods are called, like uh, show person dot. Now it says Bob Cratchit instead of Smith because we updated the last name variable. And remember, code is executed from top to bottom, so that's why this replaces the last name we have up here because it's the most recent. All right. Setting members doesn't just stop at updating the values of existing properties and methods. You can also create completely new members. Try these in the JavaScript console. Person eyes equal Hazel. Person dot farewell equals function alert by everybody. So this is actually creating the new uh, properties. So now that create there wasn't an eyes property before on the object person, so it creates the eyes property and it assigns it the value Hazel. So when we call that in the console, it uh, shows the value which is just the string Hazel. And this will do the same thing here. There's no farewell method in the person object, so it'll create a method called farewell that is this function that just says, an, that creates an alert that says bye everybody. So now if I do person dot farewell, bye everybody. So now, uh, you can now test out your new members, which I just did. I'll show person.eyes also. But so this should show the string uh, Hazel. One useful aspect of bracket notation is that it can be used to set not only member values dynamically, but member names too. Let's say we wanted users to be able to store custom value types in their people data by typing the member name and value into two text inputs. We could get those values like this, the create a variable called my data name, which equals name input dot value, and a variable my data value, which equals name value dot value. We can then add this new member name and value to the person object like this. Person, then in brackets, my data, the variable my data name, and set that, assign that equal to the my data value variable. And this will create uh, dynamic keys and values for the person object. To test this, try adding the following lines into your code just below the closing curly brace of the person object. So. So we're creating a variable called my data name, and we're assigning it the value string height. And we're creating a variable my data value, and we're assigning it the string 1.75 meters. And then we're creating a new property and value for the person object. So if I call person dot name 
Oops, shows undefined. Oh, okay, because it gave it's the height, not so the new the new property is height, not my data name. So you would type in person dot height. All right. Uh, oh. Yeah. S sorry. Hold on a sec. Let me read Is this. Okay. All right. So let's go back. So let's go through that again real quick. Just to recap, we created the variable, my data name and gave it the string height A variable, my data value and gave it the string 1.75 meters. And we created a new property and value for the person object with, and the property's name is height and the value is 1.75 meters. And we showed that by typing in the console person dot height to check what the height property was equal to. Adding a property to an object using the method above is, isn't possible with dot notation, which can only accept a literal member name, not a variable value pointing to a name. What is this? You may have noticed something slightly strange in our methods. Look at this one, for example. The greeting property and as a function with an alert that says, hi, I'm this dot name dot first, plus a period. You're probably wondering what this is. The this keyword refers to the current object the code is being written inside. So in this case, this is equivalent to person. So why not just write person instead? As you'll see in the object-oriented JavaScript for beginners article, when we start creating constructors, etc., this is very useful. It will always ensure that the correct values are used when a member's context changes, e.g. two different person object instances may have different names, but will want to use their own name when saying their greeting. Let's illustrate what we mean with a simplified pair of persons objects. So, oh. all right, so looks like Zoom got rid of the 40 minute time limit, so we can just keep rolling through. And I guess we'll take a break at eight o'clock for our 10. So here they create two objects, person one and person, they create two objects and assign them to variables, person one and person two. The first object has a property name with a value string Chris and a greeting with a function that says hi on his name with a period and person two does the same thing but the name is Brian in this case person one dot greeting will output hi I'm Chris person two dot greeting on the other hand will output hi I'm Brian even though the methods code is exactly the same in each case as we said earlier this is equal to the object the code is inside this isn't hugely useful when you are writing out object literals by hand, but it really comes into its own when you are dynamically generating objects, for example, using constructors. It will all become clearer later on. All right, you've been using objects all along. As you've been going through these examples, you have probably been thinking that the dot notation you've been using is very familiar. That's because you've been using it throughout the course. Every time we've been working through an example that uses a built-in browser API or JavaScript object, we've been using objects. Because such features are built using exactly, exactly the same kind of object structures that we've been looking at here, albeit more complex ones than our own basic custom examples. So when you use string methods like myString.split, you are using a method available on an instance of the string class. Every time you create a string in your code, that string is automatically created as an instance of string and therefore has several common methods slash properties available on it. When you access the document object model using lines like this, variable my div equals document dot create element div, variable my video equals document dot queer selector video, you are using methods available on an instance of the document class. 
for each web page loaded, an instance of document is created, called document, which represents the entire page's structure, content, and other features such as its URL. Again, this means that it has several common methods slash properties available on it. The same is true of pretty much any other built-in object slash age object slash API you've been using, array, math, etc. Note that built-in objects slash APIs don't always create object instances automatically. As an example, the Notifications API, which allows modern browsers to fire system notifications, requires you to instantiate a new object instance using the constructor for each notification you want to fire. Try entering the following into your JavaScript console. Variable my notification equals new notification hello. So let's see. So. Show that an object with. So here we created a new uh, class of the notification, and these are all the methods and properties available to it actions, add event listener, badge, body, whole bunch of different things. Again, we'll look at constructors in a later article. Note, it is useful to think about the way objects communicate as message passing. When an object needs another object to perform some kind of action often, it will send a message to another object via one of its methods and wait for a response, which we know as a return value. All right, so summary. Congratulations, you've reached the end of our first JavaScript objects article. You should now have a good idea of how to work with objects in JavaScript including creating your own simple objects. You should also appreciate that objects are very useful as structures for storing related data and functionality. If you try to keep track of all the properties and methods in our person object as separate variables and functions, it would be inefficient and frustrating. And we'd run the risk of clashing with other variables and functions that have the same names. Objects let us keep the information so safely locked away in their own package out of harm's way. In the next article, we'll start to look at object-oriented programming, OOP theory, and how such techniques can be used in JavaScript. All right, so does anyone have any questions about the object's basics? Um, if not, we can move on to the next article. Uh, hold on, let me stop the recording room. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Object oriented philosophy for beginners. With the basics out of the way, we will now put on the object oriented philosophy. Oh, yes. So, this article presents the basic view of. Basic idea of work is that we use object to model real world things 
that we want to represent inside our program and all the ways that we want to have set that we otherwise be able to make it objects and content related that are in the to represent information about the things you are trying to model and functionalities of the area that you want to you want it to have object data and open functions to can be stored neatly the official world encapsulated inside inside an object package you can be given a specific name to refer to which is sometimes called namespace making it easy to structure and access objects are commonly used as data stores that can easily stand above the network defining an object template let's consider a simple program that displays information about the student and teacher at the school here we will look at the theory in general not in the context of one but in a specific programming language to start to start with us we could return to our personal object type from the first object article which defines the generic data and the names of the person there are lots of things that we could call first person the address, right, ship sign, DNA paper, passport number, business card, personality code. But in the case, in this case, we are only interested in showing the names of gender and interest. And we also want to be able to write a short introduction about them based on this data and give them the same level. This is the thing that actually creates of a more complex thing, which represents the most important aspect in the way that we need to work with the program structure. So, to attempt to start person, first name, last name, gender, interest, bio, name is a great year, like. An actual object, it's like this. Uh, <coughs> with an actual object from our class, from our class, we can create objects with something. Objects that contain the data and opportunity to find in the class. From our personal class, from our personal class, we can now create an actual object. As person, yes, from the name person, object, person, person, name. Name, book, name, age, age, gender, no, interest, music, team, file, board, mix, is 16 years old, like music and team, moving, I, book. Object, question two, name, Diana, book, age, 28, gender, female, interest, is working, doing, file, Diana Kofi, 28 years old, she likes to talk in game. This is I and Diana. When an object is created in the class, the class constructor constructed from the design to create the process of creating an object in the class of the class of the class of the object is the class of the class of the class of In this case, we don't want generic people. We want teachers and students which are both most suited with it. So, if you want to see classes based on other classes, this school child classes can be used to be a good teacher of their parents. So, you can use and teach almost all the objects that are better than having to duplicate it. Where functionality differs between classes is one. And define specialized features to work on them in the video. That's person. So, just to tell So, this class is inheriting the first person. That's it, I mean, with a major and mutual bio subject of a new uh, property. Greetings, hello, my name is Perfect. Last name and, and I teach the subject of the class student, which generates from class person. The group is the 
change change needs to be built in or property. No, um, first name. This is really useful. Teachers and students have shared many common features such as name, age, By calling this, calling this function, try the following lines in the browsers, browsers and JavaScript console. Hey DK, we're having a little trouble hearing you. Uh, your mic's a little low. Hang in. Hello. All right, that's better. I think, at least for me. Um, 
If you can hear me, it just indicates I'll uh, speak louder. Okay, so I'm calling this function. Okay, that's an instance of this uh, function. So you can call, call, it, call it this way. Let's get the name. First line on the first line, we um, instantiated the uh, called if it, if it another instance of this of this function, then pass the uh, the variable the parameter sorry the parameter for the name placeholder, then we call the name placeholder here, then call the builtin function within the object within the function sorry, and the builtin function just allows a lot i. Um, object that name which is south south right here so i am south right. this works well enough but it is a bit long long winded if you know you want to object let's wait an object why do we need to Specific way to new and to from it. Fortunately, the was to the the Andy Bedford in the form of constructor functions. Let's make one now. Replace the previous function with the other. Controller function is JavaScript function the class. We noted that we have all the features we can put in the function, although it doesn't return any form or script with the object. If we just define the properties of function, you see you you receive this keyword behind being used. Yeah, as well. It's basically saying that whenever we have this object. Object instance is this code as the object name property will be equal to name value based to the constructor of the motor and the duty method will use the name value passed to the constructor for two. No, the constructor function name usually starts with the capital letter. This conversation is used to make constructor function so how do you call the constructor to create an object at the following lines in the US condition? So, 
yeah, we created um, a new a new um, instance of of the person class and assigned to uh, person one and passed the a value for the name. Then created another instance of, of the person class and assigned to person two and passed the value zero for name. So we use the uh, <coughs> Use the um, variable to call the function within the instances. Yeah. Cool. We now see that we have two new objects in the page, each of which is stored in a different instance. When you access their property and media, you have to start to call the present one and the present two. This possibility contains the thing. We need to package that package the way so we clash with other functionality. We do, however, have the same name, property, and everything method, method available. Look that they are using their own name, name value that was assigned to them when we operate it. So this is one reason why it's very important to use this. So they will use their own value and not. From other values. Let's look at the constructor for the day. Well, uh, person equals to new person, or well, person two equals to new person. So, in this case, new keyword is used to tell the browser we want to create an object. We want to create a new object, object instance, followed by the function name, which is a parameter containing the parameter key. And the result is stored in a variable. First, we have how standard function is called. Each instance is created according to its definition. This is the definition. So, from testing, after the new object, the object has been created, person one and person two variables the following object. Note that we are when we are calling a construction function, we are defining it every time, which is equal to you. The way is to define functions in the first type in the first type of solution, the local calculator. Putting our thing constructed. This example, we, we, look, we look at the blue world, only a simple example to get us started. Let's now get on. Get the final person to accept one. Move the two in such a way that I had the system to accept one. So we start to get the system to accept one. We get a bit more complexity. And place it with this. Um, the second, um, um, <coughs> this second one might be um, a bit confusing because um, okay, using the, um, the instance to call uh, the interest, 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 interest one. 
Okay. No, this is the argument so we get in this to work. Try continuing with it. For the exercises, start with, try adding a couple, a couple more objects to each number for your hand. And try getting, getting a certain number of the resulting objects. In addition, there are a couple of problems with our bio method. We have to always include the tonal E, even if the person is she, is the same as her. Or some other people can have participation. And the bio will only include two even if more even if more more are listed in the interesting case array. Can you work out how to fix this in the class definition constructor? You can put any code you like inside the constructor. You will probably need the two conditional conditional and the think about how the same thing should be structured. And depending on what, what or whether the number is one, two, or more than two. Well, you have to do in addition to a couple of things Gender of gen, the gender of the instance. So, um, this is a small because the state equals the state equality from here. Okay. It's a few things. Yeah. She is just saying the super. Problem is out of the way. So now we need to work on the interest part. It's only um, add two interest.
Um, guys, an object has an object has a has a length um, a, a, a length a length um, distance, right? I'm pretty sure if it's saved as an array, it like the value, it should be able to use the length property, yeah, or if it's a, a string. I, mean. I think I think an object has um has um the property that has the length of property also. Oh, okay. okay. Let's just test it. If it doesn't do it. <laughs> Does that even require a for loop? Yes, it does. You can you, you can you can just if you don't if you don't know in like the number of um, properties in this in the, in the name in the name object, how would you go about it? Well, I was just wondering if it would just look up the stat gender without the for loop. Let me try this. So uh, we're calling. Let me add um, an additional, additional for uh, interest. So this is from. So we just add to be adding okay, let's, let's do this one. Let's, uh, let's say, uh, so to keep adding all the um, values of i of the p yeah to add it all. No, I don't think it's working. Um, let's check if um, I know I the name of
Yeah, I don't think that an object doesn't have land property, so I think that's where the issue is. How do we get the number of, um, of properties within the length? And we can work with that. That would so be really easy to look through. Look through. We know the number of times we're going to need to look through the um, object. Uh, does anyone have any idea? You shouldn't have to loop through a whole object. Um, okay. You would only have to loop through. I'm looping through. Um, okay. I'm looping through this. I'm not an object. I'm looping through the uh, the array. It should be. Oh shit. Uh, it should be this dot interest. That's why that's my way. And you got length misspelled as well. Okay. Yeah. I think I have to use a more pencil that I can't really use this to uh, I think I'm going to this to the Um, well, uh, this should work. Okay, let's use concatenation instead. Let's put that to him. Let's check the string. String number. Thank you. 
wants to somewhere. Uh, hold on. Go down to your bio method. Inside the alerts. Um, when you call some. Uh, isn't that just equal to the I variable and not the array this dot interests. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I should. Oh, we should have been inside the loop. That's what you mean. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say earlier. Was that your alert shouldn't be in a loop because okay, it's going to run the alert on the yeah, first loop. Yeah, we want to repeat that. So I guess let's keep that. So. Uh, where you have in the concat, I, th okay. I think it should be this dot interest and then I in brackets because that'll actually access the item in the array. Because right now, when you call sum, all it does is have the counter and then add a comma. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that'll actually get what's in the array. Ooh, call var sum. Because you just said sum, you never actually declared it a variable. So down there in your alert, where you have plus sum, shouldn't that be plus? Well, either way, it's only gonna it's gonna run the alert on the first loop through. No, the alert is not inside the loop. It's in the continuous the thing. The continuous thing is not inside the loop also. So okay, so your loop's only for the sum. Yeah, it does add up the it stores in the array into like a, a string. I'll just add it to the alert statement by adding sum. So console log sum in your for loop. See what pops up. So you're getting empty strings. Yeah, so it's not actually accessing the array. I should really do it this way instead of using the contact method. You can try it, run it, and see what it does. Look, it works. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Okay. So, <clears throat> I think we've, um, we've, uh, <clears throat> we've settled all the questions. Can you work with the uh, to take the class construction? Put that before we try to Then we're done with that. <clears throat> Other ways to create object instances. <clears throat> so far, we've seen two different ways to create an object instance. We're an object number using them. Using a control function. So, this makes sense, but there are other ways you want to make you familiar with this in case you come across them in your travel around the web. The object constructor. First of all, you can use the object constructor 
to create a new object. Yes, even generic constructors need to construct a way to do it. You can also pass an object to the object, the object of the structure as a parameter to fill it with property method. Try this in the object of the field. See the JavaScript console. Is an equate method. You know what equate means. Constructors can help you build your code order. You can create constructors in one case, then create instances and create instances as needed. And it is clear where they can come from, where they came from. However, some people prefer to create all those instances without first creating constructors, especially if they are creating only a few instances of method. The lock of has a built in. Method called create that allows you to do that. What it with it is you can create a new object based on any existing object. With your finished exercise from the previous uh, section, you will be going to try this in the domestic council. See that person two has been created based on person one. It has the same property and method available to it. One limitation is one limitation of create is that I have um, Internet Explorer it does not support it. So for focus to be more efficient, it will not support other browsers. We will explore the effects of create create code in more detail. In more detail later. So, we have to provide the same place to provide you a little bit of screen to go through and give you an idea of what we are dealing with here. Now, 
position, we have, we have, to, we have started to look at different ways of generating a job. This article will be next article, we explore the right to get to the So I think we have to start to explore the right to get to the Hey, hello. Hey, what's up? Okay. Uh, so we want to do we want to take our ten minute? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, sure and then when we get back, uh, Pat, do you want to read first, and then we'll start all over, and I'll start reading after you. Yeah, that'll work. All right. I'll see you guys at eight ten. Right. Let me pause the recording. I see you at two ten. All right. Um, next up is object prototypes. Prototypes are the mechanism by which JavaScript objects inherit features from one another. In this article, we explain how prototype chains work and look at how the prototype properly property can be used to add methods to existing constructors. A prototype based language. JavaScript is often described as a prototype based language. To provide inheritance, objects can have a prototype object, which acts as a template that it inherits methods and properties from. An object's prototype object may also have a prototype object, which it inherits methods and properties from, and so on. This is often referred to as a prototype chain and explains why different objects have properties and methods defined on other objects available to them. Well, to be exact, the properties and methods are defined on the prototype property on the object's constructor functions, not the objects themselves. In JavaScript, a link is made between the object instance and its prototype, its proto property, which is derived from the prototype property in the constructor, and the properties and methods are found by walking up the chain of prototypes. It's important to understand that there is a distinction between an object's prototype, which is available via object.getPrototype of object, or via the deprecated proto property and the prototype property on the constructor functions. The former is the property of each instance and the latter is a property on the constructor. That is object.getprototype of refers to the same object as foobar.prototype. Hold on one second. All right. Um, Give me like two minutes. I got to take care of something real quick. I'll be right back. Sorry. Okay. Right, um, understanding prototype objects. Here we'll go back to the example in which we finish writing our person constructor. Load the example in your browser. If you still don't have it from working in the last article, use this. Okay. I think I got it right here. Uh, in this example, we have defined a constructor function like so, function, person, and this other stuff. And then we created an object instance with this, which is this right here. If you type person1 in your console, you see the browser try to autocomplete this with the member names of this object. I don't know if it works on the... Um, code bin console doesn't look like it. Let's copy it. Try using, try using the browser console for that. Let's see if it works. Um, it's funky on code bin because Let's see if it'll work here. Yeah, that's not it. Person one dot. There we go. Um, 
So here's all the stuff uh, that you see. You got age. These are different properties. Um, instructor. You got some of this other stuff as well. In this list, you will see the members defined on person one's constructor in person, name, age, gender, interest, bio, and greeting. You will, however, also see some other members, watch, value of, etc. These are defined on person's prototyped object, which is object. So person one inherits from prototype person, which inherits from prototype object. What happens if you call a method on person one, which is actually defined on object? For example, person dot value of. I don't know. It returns the object. Okay. Um, this method, object value of, is inherited by person one because its constructor is person, and person's prototype is object. Value of returns the value of the object as it is called on. Try it and see in this case. What happens is the browser initially checks to see if the person one object has a value of method available to it as defined on its constructor person. If it doesn't, so the browser then checks to see if person constructor's prototype object has a value of method available on it. It does, so it is called. And all is good. No, we want to reiterate that the methods and properties are not copied from one object to another in a prototype chain. They are accessed by walking up the chain as described above. There isn't officially a way to access an object's prototype object directly. The links between the items in the chain are defined in an internal property referred to as prototype in the specifications for the JavaScript language, CECMA script. Most modern browsers, however, do have a property available on them called proto. That's two underscores either side, which contains the object's constructor's prototype object. For example, try person.proto or person1.proto and person one proto dot proto to see what the chain looks like in code. So person one dot proto. So you get a constructor here, which is the one that we created up here. Where's my hazard is? So that's the first step up the chain is this function. And then let's do it again, but add another proto. And this is the main object constructor in the JavaScript language, I guess. Since ECMA script 2015, you can access an object's prototype object indirectly via object get prototype of object. The prototype property where inherited members are defined. So where are the inherited properties and methods defined? If you look at the object reference page, you'll see listed on the left-hand side a large number of properties and methods, many more than the number of inherited members we saw available on the person one object. Some of them are inherited, some aren't. Why is this? As mentioned above, the inherited ones are the ones defined in the prototype property. You could call it a sub namespace. That is the ones that begin with object.prototype.something and not the ones that begin with just object. The prototype property's value is an object, which is basically a bucket for storing properties and methods that we want to be inherited by objects further down the prototype chain. So object.prototype.watch, object.prototype.valueof, et cetera, are available to any objects that inherit from object.prototype, including new object instances created from the person constructor. Object.is and object.keys and other members are not defined inside the prototype bucket, are not inherited by object instances, or object types that inherit from object.prototype. There are methods and properties available just on the object constructor itself. 
This seems strange. How can you have a? What are you saying? Oh. Um. This seems strange. How can you have a method defined on a constructor, which is itself a function? Well, a function is also a type of object. See the function constructor reference if you don't believe us. You can check out existing prototype properties for yourself. Go back to our previous example and try entering the following in the JavaScript console. So person dot prototype. And you see it's constructor has the this stuff in it. And the prototype just keeps going on and on. The output won't show you very much because we haven't defined anything on our custom constructors prototype. By default, a constructors prototype always starts empty. Now try the following object dot prototype. You'll see a large number of methods defined on objects prototype property, which are all which are then available on objects that inherit from object as shown earlier. You'll see other examples of prototype chain inheritance all over JavaScript. Try looking at the methods and properties defined on the prototype of string, date, number, and array global objects, for example. These, have a, these all have a number of members defined on their prototype, which is why, for example, when you create a string like this, my string immediately has a number of useful methods available on it, like split, index of, and replace. It's worth it's worth reading more our more in-depth guide to using prototypes in JavaScript once you made sense of this section and wish to know more. This section is intentionally simplified to make these concepts a little easier to understand when you first meet them. Important. The prototype property is one of the most confusingly named parts of JavaScript. You might think that this points to the prototype object of the current object, but it doesn't. That's an internal object that can be accessed by proto, remember? Prototype instead is a property containing an object on which you define members that you want to be inherited. It's a little confusing. Early on, we showed how the object.create method can be used to create a new object instance. For example, try this in your but, previous examples, JavaScript console. But. Yeah. No, uh, let's go back to that. Uh, okay, um, we use the prototype function to uh, um, call um, 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 a property that we can uh, we can we can use, I guess. Uh, right? I think if you call it on the constructor, let's a uh, person one dot prototype. See, this doesn't have a dot prototype because it's not a constructor. Yeah, but I think it does because. Um, you uh, uh, you haven't initialized that there's no function called person at the moment. Just uh, I think try to copy the function um um function uh, uh function um person function in the your code pen and paste it in your console and see it's then already go, in there. Do it again. You already canceled it out now, so you do like refreshing. Why won't you go down? Why aren't you? All right. Oh, it was already selected. They cancel out the last part. Okay. okay. Then you call person the prototype. Person one or person the constructor? The constructor. The constructor. Yeah, that's what I just did last time. Then um, ex um, ex um, uh, expand the okay. Yeah, this is the same thing I was just showing before. Uh, okay. Expand the uh, uh, dash uh, the underscore proto. This one. Yeah. Okay. Shit, I'm still confused though. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very very. Okay, so what's the difference between prototype and proto? <coughs> proto, 
I think Proto, you can only use it to access. You can use Proto to access the 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 chain above your constructor. So, like person dot Proto. See, this is it says native code. Abu, so, uh, he doesn't have, uh, 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 that means person doesn't inherit, it, inherit from any other uh, constructor. Wait, Pat, can you now do person dot prototype? So, oh, wait, it's already above it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, think, okay, so yeah, you see. Uh, it returns like the, the, uh, the properties of like the, the, the parent class. Person doesn't have any parent class at the moment. Person is on his own. It doesn't inherit from any class. Yeah, person does inherit. It inherits from the JavaScript object. Oh shit. Which is native. Which is native code. Which is why it says this. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay um, so, so while person one so inherits. Can we um 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 make person inherit like um a different um um. Uh, uh, um, um, construct or function you get and and call uh, a person dot prototype and see what um, out what comes out what do you mean um, um, um can we make person in every from like a a constructor we make you get then call person dot prototype and see what comes out well this is what comes out on person dot prototype right here what I'm mean, like, we should uh, make it in, uh, inherit from like a class we create on our own. You get what I'm trying to say, right? But it, it wouldn't matter because if you create an object, which is what this is doing, mm -hmm. it's always going to inherit from that native code object that's within JavaScript. So you have like it starts like JS object, all right, and then under that. If you have a constructor object, and then anything you construct with that, like person or cat or dog, any of those objects you create will inherit from this, which inherits from this. Okay, okay. So like, I would imagine like anything like a uh, bar dog equals, Fido. So um, the dog instance inherits from the string object. Dog dot proto. See, it has a proto as well. Yeah, it inherits from the string object, I guess. Yeah, see, it's a string constructor. Yeah, and that'll point to the string, yeah. Yeah, so you got all these methods that you can use with the string. Uh, the methods we use, we use, like, manipulate the string, like, oh, the split and all of that. I wonder if you could do string dot... Proto. Oh shit. Don't and, and and that'll give you yeah, see that's the native code right there. JavaScript object, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So everything in JavaScript's an object. Pretty anyway, much. I'm not sure you understand like what you just read out. Like I didn't really get it at first. No, neither did I. I think us going through and console logging each different thing uh helped clear up the difference between dot prototype in the dot pro in the underscore proto mm -hmm. so like proto is like taking a step up from what you're calling it on yeah and prototype is just looking at the object of yeah. the current okay 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 now okay right. so like if there's one more like var num equals two okay from the number 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 object yeah, number dot prototype probably doesn't work. It should work. Why? See, that's not a valid method. See, yeah, dot number. prototype doesn't work, but it should have a proto, right? Yeah, everything's going to have a yeah. proto. Close, but close, things will only have a prototype if you explicitly uh, define a prototype for it. Right. I think. I think it really only works on like objects. <laughs> Number is an object also. Right. But I don't think it inherits the prototype 
uh, method or whatever from objects. Wait, wait, hold on. Number is an object. String is an object. So they should perform like they should have. They should both have um, um, a prototype uh, uh, um, function or a prototype property. Sorry. So what they said. Let me open that in a new window. So they said some things are inherited and some aren't. Okay. So like anything okay. like this is not inherited by other objects. Okay. But stuff like this, like that has object dot prototype can be inherited. Yeah, okay. reread the uh, warning. I think now that we understand it a little better, the import the red import inf is a little clearer now. Yeah, it says the prototype property is one of the most confusingly named parts of JavaScript. You might think that this points to the prototype object of the current object, but it doesn't. That's an internal object that could only be accessed by proto. Prototype instead is a property containing an object on which you define members that you want to be inherited. Okay. okay. So prototype is like uh, the current object you're, you're on. Then proto right. is like, like linked to the native like the JavaScript object. Right, but you got to remember that prototype doesn't work on everything. Okay, yeah, yeah. So like it we, doesn't work on num. It works on okay. objects, right? Okay. Uh, um, yeah, project. I think so. Let's try person. Yeah, see, I think person one prototype works. Anything else, it won't work. Okay, just try um, two dot. Let me see. Prototype. Like some string. Uh, like a number dot prototype. So uh, like. 37 dot prototype? Yeah. Oh, shit. I don't think it's going to work. What? Oh, shit. Try a string, an empty string dot prototype. That should work. You can use a variable just in case. No, just, no, just make it fast then. Right. Yeah, it's, it, would, it, would, it would pop up here if it had prototype. See? But when you assign it to uh, a variable, it works. It doesn't work. So var. STR equals empty string. Okay. And then you type STR dot. You won't get the prototype. Oh, okay. All right. But you will get the underscore proto. Oh, um. I guess kind of look good to myself right now. But if you like, let's say var OBJ equals an empty object, we'll try that. Oh shit! This this is getting more confused, more confusing. Okay. Yeah, see that doesn't even have a prototype. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I think you have to explicitly say it's a prototype. Okay, okay. okay. Like uh, I think each uh, everything that is an object, which is basically everything in JavaScript, automatically gets the underscore proto, which just uh, references the the original object class that's cr uh, created in JavaScript. And then if you want that object to have methods and properties that'll be inherited by instances of it, that's when you give it a prototype. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually we did something on, um, I added like a new method or new method on, to my string object. So I did, I did something like that about, about a few weeks ago. So I used, so I didn't really understand it, but I just used this. And it worked, I, well, I didn't really understand the concept. So that was why I had to like, do some class. So now objects should have the name in its prototype, I think. Doesn't. Nope. No. <laughs> so how does prototype work? Maybe it just works on like constructor, like oh, function dog. Oh yeah, maybe it's just on constructors. Is that Say name, age. We'll try to make just a quick little constructor here. And this does then, um, this dot name equals name. Yeah. And oh wait, you need a semicolon there. This dot age equals age. One of the things I've used a prototype, but you use prototype to add new functions. Yeah, see, the prototype's available there okay. on the constructor. 
Okay, yeah. so yeah, it only yeah. works yeah. on yeah. constructors. On, on, construct, on, on functions. I think functions, any function, it doesn't have to be a constructor. Because you use prototype. You prototype well, of, constructors are just a certain type of function. Uh, they're the same. They're, they're the same thing. You use a prototype to add 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 new uh, um maybe new function or new prop new property to uh, to maybe you can use it to add add it to a built-in uh, uh to one or to any built-in uh uh any built-in um uh, sorry built-in object in your in your program. Like, yeah. So functions do you have the prototype like method. A, you know a string. Uh, you can create. Uh, uh, a string, a string of the dozen, dozen um, for poly, 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 polydromes, right? You know what the polydrome is? A palindrome? Yeah. What do you mean? You like read forward? You can read it forward like, or backwards? Like it's it's a word like that. Like you, if you read it from the front and from yeah. the back, do the same. Right. Okay. So a, a string of it doesn't check, but can check for that. So I I think I did something. I I created. And a function to do that, then I added it to like the string to the built-in string um, object itself. In just in that program, like, you can also add it to like the whole thing itself. So you just I, I can only use it. I added it to, to use it in that program. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think. Like you added that function onto the yeah. prototype. Like I added a new property to so the string. all strings can use it in in just your app. I mean, yeah, I can just use it directly from my uh, directly later from my uh, I want to like call call it in your that. Okay, so I think what when we've I got this you, cleared up, right? We yeah, actually uh, understand prototype and proto. Yeah, I pretty much understand it. Yeah, so when I want to like use the uh, uh, the polyandrum poly, poly polydrum um, function or property I created. I just like I can use it like I can a string dot polydro like the name of the function like polydro then it it works that way. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. I so, think it should. Yeah, you know you did. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, revisiting create. Early on, we showed how object create method can be used to create a new object instance. For example, try this in your previous examples. Already oh, there you go. Um, what create actually does is create a new object from a specified prototype object. Here, person two is being created using person one as a prototype object. You can check this by entering the following in the console. There you go. So it's got all this filled in already. Uh, this will return the person one object, the constructor property. Every constructor function has a prototype property whose value is an object containing a constructor property. This constructor property points to the original constructor function. As you will see in the next section, that property is defined on the person prototype property, or in general on a constructor's functions prototype property, which is an object as mentioned in the above section become available to all the instance objects created using the person constructor. Hence, the constructor property is also available to both person one and person two objects. For example, try these commands in the console. Okay. The same thing showing the constructor as person. Each should both return the person constructor as it contains the original definition of these instances. A clever trick is that you can put parentheses onto the end of the constructor property containing any required parameters to create another object instance from that constructor. The constructor is a function after all, so can be invoked using parentheses. You just need to include the new keyword to specify that you want to use the function as a constructor. Try this in the console. You have person three equals new person one constructor and this other information. 
So if we call person three dot name first, you'll get Karen or person three dot age twenty six. Person three dot bio. Then you get the sentence. This works well. You won't need to use it often, but it can be really useful when you want to create a new instance and don't have a reference to the original constructor easily available for some reason. Uh, the constructor property has other uses. For example, if you have an object instance and you want to return the name of the constructor, it is an instance of, you can use the following, instance name, constructor name. So try this person one dot constructor dot name person. So it shows the name of your constructor. So I guess if you do person three dot constructor dot name, oh, you still get person. The value of the constructor dot name can change due to prototypical inheritance, binding, preprocessors, transpilers, etc. So for more complex examples, you'll want to use instance of operator instead. Modifying prototypes. Let's have a look at an example of modifying the prototype property of a constructor function. Methods added to the prototype are then available on all object instances created from the constructor. At this point, we'll finally add something to our person's constructor prototype. Go back. Um, before it, the existing JavaScript, add the following code, or below the existing JavaScript, add the following code, which adds a new method to the constructor's prototype property. We'll copy this. Oops. And then we'll come back here. Uh, I guess we don't need to add it in the original. So prototype.farewell function alert this first name has left the building by for now. Okay, save the code and load the page in the browser. Try entering the following into the text input. So let's just try this on the Code pin console person one dot farewell. And there you go. So that should work on everything you create that is a person constructor, even if you've already created it earlier. And I, I think this is what I was talking about. Like, can do this for um, the building um, uh, object also. Mm hmm. You should get an alert message displayed featuring the person's name as defined inside the constructor. This is really useful, but what is even more useful is that the whole inheritance chain has updated dynamically, automatically making this new method available on all object instances derived from that constructor. Think about this for a moment. In our code, we define the constructor, then we create an instance object of the constructor, then we add a new method to the constructor's prototype but the farewell method is still available on the person one object instance. Its members have automatically been updated to include the newly defined farewell method. If you're having trouble getting this example to work, uh, well, it worked. You will rarely see properties defined on the prototype property because they are not very flexible when defined like this. For example, you can add a property like so person.prototype.fullName equals Bob Smith. This isn't very flexible as a person might not be called that. It would be much better to build out the full name out of name.first than name.last. Like so. However, this, this however doesn't work as this will be referencing the global scope in this case, not the function scope. Calling this property would return undefined undefined. This worked fine on the method we defined earlier in the prototype because it is sitting inside a function scope, which will be transferred successfully to the object instance scope. So you might define constant properties on the prototype, i.e. ones that never need to change, but generally it works better to define properties inside the constructor. 
In fact, it's fairly common pattern for more object definitions is to define properties inside the constructors and the methods on the prototype. This makes code easier to read as the constructor only contains property definitions and the methods are split off into separate blocks. So function test A, B, C, D, and then the methods are down here using the prototype. Okay, that makes sense. So you wouldn't have like functions inside your constructors that would be separate like this. Yeah, like we're adding new properties to the function, like to the, to the object. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could see how that's a lot more useful. It makes it the code a lot less cluttered. Than yeah, having, especially. Like, this huge constructor with like 20 definitions and 15 different functions. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you had like something like this where the function is like, the function itself. It has a bunch of conditionals, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You know what I was talking about before? Yeah, I, I think that's just cleaner code, I guess. Um, summary. This article has covered JavaScript object prototypes, including how prototype object chains allow objects to inherit features from one another, the prototype property, and how it can be used to add methods to constructors and other related topics. In the next article, we'll look at how you can implement inheritance of functionality between two of your own custom objects. All right, you wanna take us one, Rashad? Yep. All right, inheritance in JavaScript. With most of the gory details of OOJS now explained, this article shows how to create child object classes, constructors that inherit features from their parent classes. In addition, we present some evidence on when and where you might use OOJS and look at how classes are dealt with in modern ECMAScript syntax. Prototypal inheritance. So far, we have seen some inheritance in action. We have seen how prototype chains work and how members are inherited going up a chain, but mostly this has involved built-in browser functions. How do we create an object that inherits from another object? Let's explore how to do this with a concrete example. Getting started. First of all, make yourself a copy of our OOJS class inheritance start HTML file. See it running live also. Inside here, you'll find the same person constructor example that we've been using all the way through the module with a slight difference. We've defined only the properties inside the constructor. The methods are all defined on the constructor's prototype. For example, person up, okay. You also, in the note, in the source code, you also see bio and farewell methods defined. Later, you'll see how these can be inherited by other constructors. All right, so. I'm just gonna get this and put inside the code pen and update it. So yeah, they have a they create have a couple of variables here. Input button and para, which all select inputs a button in a paragraph. Function person, which is our constructor. And then here are the uh, methods. And let me add a little space in between them so it's easier to read.
So we wanted to create a teacher class, like the one we described in our initial object-oriented definition, which inherits all the members from person, but also includes a new property subject. This will contain the subject the teacher teaches, an updated greeting method, which sounds a bit more formal than the standard greeting method, more suitable for a teacher addressing some students at school. Defining a teacher construction constructor function. First thing we need to do is create a teacher constructor function, add the following below the existing code. So here, creates the teacher constructor and looks like it has person dot call chat. I don't think they've explained that method to us, but they'll probably will. Which one? What happened? Uh, you, you said they're going to explain one, a method, so I didn't get what you said. Okay. Uh, this looks similar to the person constructor in many ways, but there's something strange here that we have not seen before, the call function. Yeah. Uh, this function basically allows you to call a function defined somewhere else, but in the current context. The first parameter specifies the value of this that you want to use when running the function and the other parameters are those that should be passed to the function when it is invoked. We want the teacher constructor to take the same parameters as the person constructor it is inheriting from, so we specify them all as parameters in the call invocation. So yeah, all these are the same ones that are on uh, person. First, last, age, gender, interest. Uh, first, oh. last, age, gender, interest. And I got a also, question. Yeah. Uh, so the what call does is it will make like this dot name and would actually put the same array for first and last name, like the uh, person object or the person constructor did. It, it's it's creating a constructor for like uh like the 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 uh, past of uh, variables get yeah, that are actually in uh a person. This the subject is the only one that is like. The only new um, um, property that um, teacher created. The rest are actually um, from um, person. Right. So I'm so, so it'll take the, it'll put the like first and last in an object, just like person does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like okay. we're like creating a constructor for like those um, variables for the person for the person uh, property. Sorry for the person object. Okay. Okay. okay, so we're good. All right. Uh, we want the teacher constructor to take the same parameters as the person constructor it is inheriting from, so we specify them all as parameters in the call invocation. The last line inside the constructor simply defines the new subject property that teachers are going to have, which generic people don't have. As a note, we could have simply done this. Uh, function teacher have all the properties that you need and then so define it like so instead of doing it like this uh, instead of calling person just create it like we did person and add all the this dot name equal to first last and all that but this is just redefining the properties anew not inheriting them from person so it defeats the point of what we were trying to do it also takes more lines of code Inheriting from a constructor with no parameters. Note that if the constructor you are inheriting from doesn't take its property values from parameters, you don't need to specify them as additional arguments in call. So for example, if you had something really simple like this, uh, a brick constructor with a uh, width and height, you could inherit the width and height properties by doing this as well as the other steps described below, of course. Uh, create a specific kind of brick and then call uh, the brick function in. All you have to do is put in this and then they added the opacity and color okay, uh, properties to the blue glass yeah, brick constructor. Yeah, Note that we've only specified this inside call. No other parameters are required as we are not inheriting any properties from the parent that are set via parameters. 
setting teachers prototype and constructor reference. All is good so far, but we have a problem. We have defined a new constructor and it has a prototype property, which by default just contains a reference to the constructor function itself. It does not contain the methods of the person constructor's prototype property. To see this, enter object.getOwnPropertyNamesTeacher.Prototype into either the text input field or your JavaScript console. So it's just a array that says constructor. I think try, try that on like the browser's console. Um, I'll give you more information. Yeah. But you know about like the, uh, the codes, you have to like paste those codes down there also before you can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And then all that, all this is just from the original prototype. I I mean object prototype. From the built in built in object. Okay. Then enter it again, replacing teacher with person. Uh, nor does the new constructor inherit those methods. To see this, compare the outputs of person dot prototype greeting and teacher dot prototype greeting. Yeah, type in that get own property okay. names again with with person and person in it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see a difference. Yep, you can see. Okay, then it has the methods bio greeting and farewell because they were yeah. added on as methods inside the code uh, here onto the prototype. So, so teacher doesn't get any of these uh, methods that are added on to the prototype. So you only get like the, the uh, constructor. Yeah, it only gets what's inside the constructor. Okay. Okay. So add the following line oh, below oh, your oh, previous- you still be able to like access- oh, whoops. Methods like I'm just saying, I'm just thinking you still be able to access methods like from uh, from the person the person um person object within the teacher's um object. Wait, say that again. Like, we should still be able to like access other methods apart from the constructor. I'm just I was just I'm just thinking you still oh, be okay. able to like access other uh, object other other function. Sorry. Like the um the prototype function, like the newly added functions. I think can't we should, there should be a way that we could actually assess them. Um, assess them within the teacher's function. With this the teacher property, sorry. So with this the teacher uh teacher's um, object. You get what I said? Wait, say that one more time. There should be a way, like we can assess like the the prototype functions we did in, in the person's um, object. Oh, okay, from the that's teacher. Really, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think they're about to go over that. Yeah, they'll this. probably explain it in like okay. a paragraph or so. All right, so, all right. So right here, they're just saying how teacher in, doesn't inherit what the methods from the prototype, from the person constructor. So teacher.prototype.greeting, we need to get teacher to inherit the methods defined on person's prototype. So how do we do that? So step one, we're going to add the following uh, line below your, our previous edition, teacher.prototype equals object.createPerson.prototype. Okay, okay, okay. So, this is probably how you do it. <laughs> I just tried to copy and paste off your screen, Rashad, on the Zoom. <laughs> 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 not gonna lie i might have i might have done that before <laughs> all, right. all right all right so here our friend create comes to the rescue again in this case we are using it to create a new object and make it the value of teacher.prototype the new object has person.prototype as its prototype and will therefore inherit if and when needed all the methods available on person.prototype <laughs> uh, 
All I right. think what, what that does is that it adds um, like the, the, the prototype uh, methods, the prototype property to yeah. like teacher's pro 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 prototype also. Yeah, you so know? now if I, hold on. If I you copy this to, line and put it into the console. Yeah. You should be able to uh, call like the prototype functions. Now if so I call this, call we should have bio greeting and farewell. Right. Just check, check within the bracket. Uh, or you can call, call um, you just did it then try calling try using the object the prototype dot um, greeting object the prototype no no object sorry teachers the prototype the greeting oh, okay yeah teacher you to assess it that way yeah um bracket oh shit <laughs> not read property first of all. Okay. Uh, pressing the greeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, let's well, let's keep reading. Yeah. We need <laughs> to do one more thing before we move on. <laughs> After adding the last line, teacher.prototypes constructor property is now equal to person because we just set teacher.prototype to reference an object that inherits its properties from person.prototype. Try saving your code, loading the page in a browser, and entering teacher.prototype.constructor into the console to verify. This can become a problem, so we need to set this right. You can do so by going back to your source code and adding the following line at the bottom. Object.define property teacher.prototype.constructor value teacher innumerable false so that does not appear in foreign loop and writable true. Now, if you save and refresh, entering teacher.prototype.constructor should return teacher as desired, plus we are inheriting from person. So let's go through that one more time. Yeah, that part is like a bit confusing. What yeah. Like the number three. It's right there, not, it should be number three, yeah. Like the value and number we write there, but that should be just, nah. Let me do one more thing. If you understand, you can try to explain because uh, I'm trying to understand it myself. This can be become a big problem. We need to do more things. Well, I want to see what. Uh, It says now. Okay, so yeah, it's saying the prototype is person, which we don't want. We want it to be teacher. Within your, since you've already entered that code, because you just press up, up two times or three times, you get back to that and you can click again. Instead of copying and pasting it. Just pr um, press the um, up key two or three times since you've already written the code before. Okay. Instead of looking for it to be within the to be the log. So after this, teacher is supposed to have the methods that person has, right? Yeah, that was what I was thinking. And it should show up in the console that it does. I think that's what not. like it started as, but I think they changed halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> because like it seems like it's talking about something else in the last couple steps yeah it's like is that the last is just complicated like just explain everything boom yeah I, I, like they started off saying oh you notice that it doesn't have the same methods now do that <laughs> oh it's still not going to have the same methods after you do that <laughs> look it's now teacher after, instructor after you know? all yeah. the, after and it problem. it never really showed us how to get the methods from person yeah, yeah, like the prototype methods from person. Yeah, because <laughs> step one, it says it uh, 
creates the prototype of teacher to the object that's the prototype of person. So now the prototype of teacher is person. And these steps are talking about changing that. So it says teacher. Yeah. It never talked about getting the methods from person to teacher. No, I mean, if you look at the constructor that you just put in the console, it's the uh, exact same thing we typed in the JavaScript before. Yeah, expand, expand, expand the, um, the last, this thing you, the output for the last, um, yeah, expand that, yeah, expand it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's still the same. Yeah. It's still the same as the last one. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, that's what I was saying. I didn't understand why we went through all that. Yeah, if it's because, for, well, for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all the same thing as where you're calling yeah. a person. Honestly, I was thinking like we would like all the prototype methods like within person. The prototype of function, hey, methods, two methods, within person. I'll try to um, call it the way we wanted to call it before and see if it works. Yeah, hold on. I'm going to, maybe with this added... Okay, okay, Let's yeah, just see yeah. if we add both of these, if it'll somehow work. Yeah. Somehow miraculously work. Okay. So all that's, I guess we so. have all this. And so Thank if you. we do. If we do a uh, um, teacher, teacher.prototype dot written, let's check for that. Check for the prototype method. Yeah, I just want to. It's a person constructor. Yeah. So it still doesn't have the, the methods. Prototype, the prototype Try the teacher.prototype constructor. Oh, okay. I think I will return the constructor. I think that should return the constructor. You return the constructor. Yeah, like the constructor we declared the editor. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, what did I? Oh. <laughs> I'm not it sure what I just clicked console. on. Just go, yeah, just, just click on, on console. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I wasn't in the console. I was like, <laughs> the console's looking real <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, so I get what this so, section did, but it didn't you, answer the original question. Do, like, it, it right? did actually do it. We're expecting to like, so we were like call the prototype method within person. Now we can actually call the prototype method also. Still the same thing after the whole, uh, the whole chaining and all of that. All right. <laughs> Add the following line below your previous edition teacher prototype equals object create person prototype. Here. And then. Here our friend create comes to the rescue again. In this case, we're using it to create a new object and make it the value of teacher.prototype. The new object has person.prototype as its prototype and will therefore inherit, if and when needed, all the methods available on person.prototype. Okay, so that's, that's the important bit. If and when needed, it has to be a new instance. So step two, we need to do one more thing before we move on. After adding the last line, teacher.prototype's constructor property is now equal to person because we just set teacher.prototype the reference to reference an object that inherits its properties from person.prototype. Try saving your code, loading the page in a different browser, and entering teacher.prototype constructor into the console to verify. That'll show that the prototype of teacher is person instead of teacher. Uh, step three, this can become a problem, so we need to set this right. You can do so by going back into your source code and adding the following line at the bottom. It's added right here. And what that does is it change, changes the prototype from, of teacher from person back to teacher. Now, if you save and refresh, entering teacher.prototype constructor uh, should return teacher as desired. I'll do that. And, uh, it returns the constructor teacher instead of earlier where it would have con uh, showed the constructor person. So giving teacher a new greeting function. To finish off our code, we need to define a new greeting function on the teacher constructor. The easiest way to do this is to define it on teacher's prototype. Add the following at the bottom of your code.
So here's the new function for the greeting for the teacher. It changes from Mr. to Mrs. if it's male or female, or MX, I guess, if it's other. And then the alert will say, hello, my name is Mr. Uh, the teacher's last name, and I teach their subject, and end it with a period. This alerts the teacher greeting, which also uses an appropriate name prefix for their gender worked out using a conditional statement. If it's male, it's Mr. If it's male, Mrs. Else, anything else, it's MX. Trying the example out. Now that you've entered all the code, try creating an object instance for the teacher by putting the following at the bottom of your JavaScript or something similar of your choosing. So I have that already here just creates a new uh, instance of the teacher constructor called teacher one and the, the first name's Dave, last name Griffiths, age 31, he's male, and those are his likes and that's the subject he teach, teaches. So now if I do teacher one dot greeting in the console, it should show, I'll spell it wrong. Hmm. Let's hmm. Saying teacher one. Let's see if I messed up somewhere. It works in this JavaScript console. That was weird. That's not working in CodePen. Yeah, I got it working in CodePen. Maybe you just forgot something. I must something. have copied and pasted it wrong somewhere. Um, uh, try saving it uh, in your CodePen and then running it again. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. There's just so many different updates. Yeah, I think I just need to save it. Oh, nope. Red line's back. Uh, there might be something missing. Let me put this all in. Hello, my name is Mr. Griffiths and I teach mathematics. So I copy and pasted my code pen. So that's weird that. Yeah, I don't understand what's going on because mine works. It's the same thing. <laughs> same thing. Same code and all. I literally copy and pasted without changing anything. But uh, I guess we won't worry about that right now. We see that it's working over in the JavaScript console for like Chrome's console. So. If we want to see teacher one name first, that should be Dave. His interest, his first interest should be football. And then his bio will be just like the person's, but slightly different because it's uh, he has different parameters. These should all work just fine. The queries on lines one, two, three, and six access members inherited from the generic person constructor class. The query on line four, subject, access. I wanted to work on um, code pen also. Okay. 
I'm not sure what's wrong with my code pen then. Cause... You can try refreshing the whole page. I don't know. Yeah. And, and are we copied like the. Still, but I guess it's the work of code pen. I mean, if it works in the console, it should work in code pen. Yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah. I, that doesn't make any sense to me that it's working in. No, it's just. It's human factor, so it's all right. Maybe if I re copy and paste it from no, here. No, don't copy and... from the console. Copy it from like the, uh, the, the model itself. Well, let me see if uh, the refresh worked first. Now, nah, because it's still that red line. Well, did you um go back? Go back. Did you um uh, um we uh, did you uh, sorry um did you initialize uh, this stuff? No, we initialize. Sorry. Uh, did you? Oh, you're missing that one part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That instance of um what? That part right there. The, you just passed it. You, you didn't create an instance of, of teacher the object one, defined one. property. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's, now that's the last part. That, that's where that's where you can right here. That. No, 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 no. Like go down. Go, go down. Keep going. This one, yeah. Teacher one, yeah. This one, no. This line. Oh, this one. teacher one, yeah. Yeah. He's got that in there. Yeah, I have it. Okay. It's all the way down here. Oh, okay. 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 just hold on. Let, You're missing let the define one. The object define. No, go down. Let me see. Oh, no, you do have it in there. I don't know. There's yeah. something missing. The arrangements. The arrangement. I think it's the arrangement. What's the arrangement? Like, um, the way I arranged it, um, the, um, um, <clears throat> the person um, um, object is first. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. After the person's object, the prototype functions. Then, after that, uh, oh, okay. I get what you're saying. My that, order may be yeah, it might be messed up. Yeah. So after that, then the uh, after that they initialized um, the person um, fun, um, object, then created the teacher's um, object, teacher's constructor. Sorry. Then the prototype, blah blah blah. Then the pro object, the defined prototype property. Sorry. Then. Um, created an instance of teacher one of teacher three. So you take yeah. it step by step. I think it's the order. But, but what doesn't make sense is if he copies all the way, all that over to the console, it works. Yeah, it's yeah. So oh, <laughs> I think code pen is more of like I, because I don't know. Yeah, I think it's like, like arrange it. it, arrange it on code pen and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then it might be like. A little glitch that we haven't noticed. Yeah, because I have these, and then which we haven't used yet, but I have the person constructor like, here. Expand like like your like the JavaScript um um this thing UI yeah expand it out so you would like look through it well. Yeah. So so. Okay. Here's the three variables. But just remove, like, remove this, um, the uh, event system. I think there's, we, are really, we are only working with the function. Just make your code a little less um, crowded. Yeah, but all at, that, yeah. At the beginning. Yeah, but all Go. that code was just copied straight over from in the end. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Just make, just so you can actually look through your code easily. That's like, that's... Yeah, so you just want to see the person constructor, right? You want to yeah, see... Yeah. No, no, go, go back, go up, like the, the events calling, like the calling, uh, initializing events and all that, yeah. Wait, so these up here? Yeah, it comes through, like, the three, the power. Okay. Content. Yeah, just remove it, out. remove it. Just, it. just remove it, like, just so you reduce the size of your code. I'll comment it out. Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and then, so I have the person constructor. I have the three methods added to it. The person okay. one, which isn't really necessary, so okay. I'll comment it fine. out real quick. We have the teacher constructor. Okay. And then we have the teacher.prototype, which changes the prototype of it. Okay. And then this object defined to change it. From oh, okay, okay, okay. You are uh, reinitializing uh, grits in here. So I think comment this out. I didn't use this. Comment this out. No, like um, teachers are protected with written. Like when you are initializing written there. Like come, go down a little bit. Come down. Yeah, teachers are protected with written. Like this one. Comment like the old, the old, that old function out. 
Okay. Like, comment it out so at least so okay. Try oh, okay. look like I think it's doing the whole thing. Yeah. All right, there we go. Okay, so try to um, press the uh, teacher one dot. Try teacher one dot name. See if that pops up. Oh. Uh yeah. Why is teacher one know you like? Okay, then try teacher one dot greeting. Well, the greeting's not gonna work because it's commented out. No, 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 no. It's that's just the right? updated greeting, right? Yeah, that's an so, update. You yeah. can use like the yeah. So hi, I'm Dave. You can use the initial okay, one. so so it is something. I guess in the comment, something that's commented out. Yeah. So let's take it one step at a time. Let's comment okay. this back in and see what that does. And now we like to call the new function or the, the new grid person function. So that works also. I, I don't know. So I think that was some, something. So this wasn't it? So. Mm -hmm. I think like this is you really go I I don't think this should have messed with it. Yeah, you shouldn't like my I didn't comment that my own out, so you should just really you should just override this that the new uh, instance override this. I think it's from like the the document uh, the event stuff from the top. Yeah. Yeah, but that's in mine and it works. Yeah, well, well try let me put it back in and let's see. This is some practice in uh, debugging, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's something in here that. Yeah, okay, hold on. Oh, uh, okay. Let me see if I have it different than if somehow I messed with it after copying it. I think you messed it after copying it. You have to go to the GitHub page. Oh yeah. That's the only place. Yeah. <laughs> I think you missed the part this or something. I don't know. I might have var input document selector input. Close you didn't miss one. You didn't miss Bar anything. button document select button. Bar para equals you document miss, selector. You didn't miss nothing yet from what I'm saying. Here. And then the button on click. What this is equals this function, which does. Yeah. This is how they have it in the GitHub. Uh -oh. I don't know. It it's. Try to run it again. Try to test it again. Let's see if it's just the greeting. Maybe farewell will work. Uh, it, it don't look bad. I don't think it's what about so, name? What about just a regular property? Yeah. Yeah. Like what about no. the new property? Like, is there a new property within teacher one? Subject, I mean, try subject. Yeah. No, it's, it's like it can't even recognize the object. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just like, I think something is like crushing your code. Something is just. Comment out like the, the, like the, the first part, like, yeah. No. yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Just this first line? Do it line by line? Yeah, do it line by line. If you hit the up button, it should just repaste. Oh, yeah. So. Next line. I'll I keep them commented out for button, now. The button on click. That's the button on click. <laughs> I think yeah, I think this is it for some reason. That's it's messing with it. <laughs> I, I I removed my own though. Like like oh. remove the old function. Like comment out the old function. Yeah. The, the click is I'm triggering a function, so you have to comment out the old function. And actually, I'll just do this. So now it'll probably work, right? Yeah. So, so I think let me put disconnect. these back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I think double it's a check. So there, there might yeah. be something. There's a disconnect between the on click button and probably your HTML, if I had to guess. Yeah, it's somehow. Oh, oh, oh! Uh, part, everything like, else. Did, did, did you copy the HTML part of the of the of the repo? You know what? I didn't. Maybe that's what it is. I I didn't. Uh, so I removed it. So I I didn't copy it because I know. Oh where, yeah, you don't have any HTML, so you have no button to click on. Yeah, so I guess yeah, since there's no button to click on, 
Your code is breaking at this point. Yeah. It's breaking at the button, button dot on click. It's breaking at that point. So it's not even getting to like the person, doctors of like the teachers. Um, uh, teachers yeah. Person. It's not even getting there. So if I just create one real quick. Okay. Let's see if it works. Yep. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> hey, that's some pretty good debugging. I, I would have to say, guys. <laughs> uh, I felt like that. that's pretty good practice. We got to go through the code line by line, see what was making it and fixed it. What was breaking it? I feel like that was pretty useful. Yeah. Was. All right. Good work, guys. <laughs> I would have never <laughs> found that out by myself. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're moving to um, trying the example out. So we've done that. Yeah. Uh, we we right. called like the we called we already called the the um properties, so you yeah. can just read through like the second the next paragraph from that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we finished reading this and. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll start back up here. Okay, okay. The technique we covered here is not the only way to create inheriting classes in JavaScript but it works okay. And it gives you a good idea about how to implement inheritance in JavaScript. You might also be interested in checking out some of the new ECMA script features that allow us to do inheritance more cleanly in JavaScript, see classes. We didn't cover those here as they are not yet supported very widely across browsers. All the other code constructs we discussed in this set of articles are supported as far back as Internet Explorer 9 or earlier. And there are ways to achieve earlier support than that. A common way is to use a JavaScript library. Most of the popular options have an easy set of functionality available, an easy set of functionality available for doing inheritance more easily and quickly, for doing inheritance more easily and quickly. CoffeeScript, for example, provides class, extends, etc. All right. A further exercise. In our OOP theory section, we also included a student class as a concept which inherits all the features of person and also has a different greeting method from person that is much more informal than the teacher's greeting. Have a look at what the student's greeting looks like in, the se in that section and try implementing your own student constructor that inherits all features of person and implements the different greeting function. Okay. Note, if you have trouble getting this to work, have a look at our finished version running live also. Um, I think I'll just talk about what we would do instead of going through and doing it yeah. all we have a new we have a new student class right then after that we are we're going to like link it to um person we yeah. no, we have a new student class we don't know if, if, if it has the, and we just create a constructor that inherits from person for like the student class mm -hmm. then after that we then I think, hold on after that <clears throat> after that we after that, we um, do this teachers of prototype equals object to create person the prototype. And what, what does that like? Like we should actually try to um, get like the function of each line so we can comment them and so like even when you want to explain to people, you can you get. Yeah. So like, all right. Um, okay. What does the next line after like the new the new right, class? What right does there it do? is where you have function teacher. Okay, you understand yeah. that, right? Yeah. You're pulling everything from the person with the call method. Yeah. Okay, for teacher dot prototype equals object create person dot prototype, what you're doing is you're pulling in the methods because you're you're creating a prototype that's similar to the person. Okay, okay, okay. The next that, line uh, is pulling the prototype methods from person, person from person. Yeah, and then it assigns it to the teacher prototype. Right. Yeah. So and then the this line changes only, that. So, yeah, so the first one only is copying the object. Yep. The second one is copying the prototype in a way. Yep. And the third one, I have no idea why it's needed, but it is needed. <laughs> yeah. It changes the, without this here, uh, it would, if we looked at the teacher.prototype constructor, it would show the person constructor instead of the teacher. Right. So we need this code here. So it, uh, when we look up the teacher prototype constructor, it's the teacher instead of uh, the person. Right. Okay. And then this is just uh, creating a new greeting function. Yeah, I understand that. I even had that in my own. 
and then this is just creating an instance of it. And so if we wanted to do student, all we would do is change this to student. Uh, we would get rid of subject. Well, we could leave it in there and maybe put it like fave subject. And then we would change everything here where it says teacher to student. And we would just create a new greeting function that's less formal. Uh, if you guys wanted, we could go through it. I, it doesn't matter to me. Well, no, I what, think I pretty much understand. Yeah, we, I yeah. think we well, well we should, we just we need to know like what like what what are the, what what are the other things that um um student um student this and that the greeting is um is different is less formal than what else we can create you can just create a function that satisfies the this and then we'll walk through the like the inheritance ourselves ourselves. Wait, say that one more time. Like, um, what are, what are like the new things um, that students that uh, student student class has? Oh, nothing. They didn't. Uh, they were saying they didn't add any. I don't think they added anything. They the just changed the greeting. Yeah, okay, let's work on the greeting. We we uh, we uh, after we uh, we do the create the constructor for students. We yeah. we initialize greeting. Yeah. Right. And after yeah, that, I'll show the finished code because okay. so let's do it before we look at the code. Let's just work on it, then we can look at the code for reference if we get it wrong. Okay, yeah, yeah. sure, we can do it real quick. Yeah, all right, so here we would start with function. I don't remember all the arguments, so I'm going to copy them. <laughs> yeah, that's how <laughs> Doesn't make it easier for me then. Just change the name to oh, shit. First, last, age, and then we want to do call dot. Oh, person. Yeah, we want to You just leave do the okay, person we, object, call it. Well, there's no subject, so we just um, call person and yeah. remove subject from the parameters i guess yeah we then we don't they don't have a subject so we don't need to put it and then here okay we do this yeah. let me do this we do this if i can spell right student oh shit and then here okay so here we set the prototype of person, the, pr the person prototype to the student prototype. And then here we change it so the constructor of student is the student constructor and not the person constructor. And then if we wanted to create a new greeting for the student, we would do um, student. student uh, yep. Yeah. Greeting. Function that uh, we change. I'll use this as a base and then change it from here. Okay, so um, you, you can just say you, you. Um, yeah. okay. I'll just have it as he and she, and then. Yeah, I'm just you. I don't. Well, we introduce greetings more like you. Um, I don't think we need this else statement because I think he and she will be fine. I don't. Yeah, you just can't think of anyone else. <laughs> You're going to do with your function. Oh, shit. And for the student greeting, we'll just say, hello, my name is... Oh, I guess we don't even need a pronoun because it'll, it'll just say... We'll have, hello, my name is... This dot and the last name plus... Thank you. 
Okay, guys, what does what does the object do define property? Blah 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 blah. What does, what does that particular part? What does that particular um um line of code? What does it do? Wait, where? Object dot define property. Blah 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 blah. Where is that? Uh, oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does that part do? Because I can't really. So, he uh, this line here. Uh, assigns the constructor prototype. Okay. If you typed in teacher's prototype constructor after putting in this line, it'll have the person. It'll be equal to the person. Yeah, but you can't access like the prototype methods yet with that. They are there, yeah. but you can't access them. Good. So the next one, the object the define property. This changes it so that the it now the teacher prototype constructor will refer to the teacher uh, constructor instead of the people constructor. Instead of the people constructor. Mm -hmm. Person constructor, sorry. Oh, yeah, instead of person, not people, sorry. Okay, uh, what was I write? I'd recommend this. Uh, so, hello, my name is blank. Uh, oh, if we probably need a space in here, don't we? Hello, my name is whatever the student's name is, and then, and I love being a student. What are we missing? If. Actually, hold on. I don't need any of this because the green is just going to be this anyway. So let me create a new instance. Call it student one. Call them. Ah. <laughs> Zilla, just because a little old for a student, so put like 15. Mine will do it. I don't need subject. I, uh, okay. So student one dot name, Jake Mozilla. Student one dot greeting. Hello, my name is Mr. Mo oh. I don't want Mr. Where is that? Let's go back. Okay, how many functions are we passing into? I think I'll just use the call to the person instead and I'll read. Um, is that you have the same parameters? So, okay. um, student one. Oh, that's why, because it's new teacher here instead of new student. <laughs> yeah. Now the greeting should be, hello, my name is Jake Mozilla, and I love being a student. So here we created a new class called student. Uh, we called person, so it has uh, person is its proto. And then here we assign the person prototype constructor to the prototype for student. And this is where we change the prototype constructor to reference student instead of person. And then here we create a new greeting function, which is just an alert that says, hello, my name is the student's name and I love being a student. And it has all the properties that teacher and person have minus subject because we didn't put it inside the oh, student class. So if we did subject, it shouldn't show up. It's undefined because it doesn't have that property, but has farewell. Or does it not? I thought it did. Mine is no. Oh, it's student one. That's why. <laughs> oh, oh, <sh> yeah. 
Jake oh, has left the building. Bye for now. So that would be how we uh, create a new class. Oh. So where are we now? All right. So we're done with this. Object member summary. To summarize, you've basically got three types of property slash methods uh, to worry about. One, those def defined inside a constructor function that are given to object instances. These are fairly easy to spot in your own custom code. They are the members defined inside a constructor using the this.x equals x type lines in built-in browser code. They are in built-in browser code, they are the members only available to object instances, usually created by calling a constructor using the new keyword, e.g. var my instance equals new my constructor. So what we did here with student one, where we called new student. Uh, then we have those defined directly on the constructor themselves that are available only on the constructor. These are commonly only available on built-in browser objects and are recognized by being chained directly onto a constructor, not an instance. For example, object.keys. That's not on an instance of object, it's directly on the uh, original object. And then we have those defined on a constructor's prototype, which are inherited by all instances and inheriting object classes. These include any member defined on a constructor's prototype property, e.g. myConstructor.prototype.x, which is how we did the methods here. I think this part, this part of object that define properties, more the object is identifying like the uh, the object the, the object of person, not like the object property object um object pro, object um this the object uh, object class itself. Wait, which one? Like the line the object that define property, the object is person. It's not like the object, the build, the the object class, object class itself, like JavaScript object. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. I think that's what the number two is saying. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, they're explaining the different uh, types, and these ones are the ones directly on the constructor, not on an instance of it. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions about the three different kinds of property slash methods we have? All right, let me keep going. ECMA script 2015 classes. Uh, ECMA script 2015 introduces class syntax to JavaScript as a way to write reusable classes using easier, cleaner syntax, which is more similar to classes in C++ or Java. In this section, we'll convert the person and teacher examples from prototypal inheritance to classes to show you how it's done. This mo note, this modern way of writing classes is supported in all modern browsers, but is still worth noting, worth knowing about how to, uh, the underlying prototypal inheritance in case you work on a project that requires supporting a browser that doesn't support the syntax, most notably Internet Explorer. So most modern Browsers will use classes instead of prototypal inheritance, but you may not always get to, so it's good to know how to do both. Yeah, class would make it easier to inherit. So. Yeah. Let's look at a rewritten version of the person example, class style. So you just call class and then person and then constructor uh, with all the, pro the properties you want, and then you define them inside the constructor. Then and then outside the constructor sense. is, yeah, but sense. still inside the class is where you yeah. define the methods. Yeah, yeah. And you, you don't have Java, to call function greeting or anything. You just call it greeting. And then if you, if you don't Java, this, this is, this is like almost, it's almost like Java. Like almost exactly. The class statement indicates that we are creating a new class inside this block. We define all the features of the class. The constructor method defines the constructor function that represents our person class. Greeting and farewell are class methods, 
any methods you want associated with the class are defined inside it after the def are defined inside it after the constructor. In this example, we've used template literals rather than string concatenation to make the code easier to read. Uh, did you guys do you guys know about template literals? Nah. Well, yeah. Yeah, the back they're so much easier to use. <laughs> yeah, they are. I much prefer them over like concatenating or stuff like that. So. Oh, oh uh, okay, 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 okay. I know, okay, I know. Okay, I know too. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know too. Yeah. I, I use the rule. I use it on a script, so. Okay. I was going to do like a quick overview real quick, but if you know, then we'll keep yeah, going. Yeah, I do, I do. I just didn't get the name before. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can now instantiate object instances using the new operator in just the same way as we did before. So let Han equal new person, and then... Uh, it's the same way as before. Class makes it easier, I mean. Class makes and then hi, hand dot greeting uh, gives you the hi, I'm Han. And okay. So this is what we're doing on using of oh shit. Yeah. All so right. and let Leia will be uh, defined the same way as we did before. So note under the hood, your classes are being converted into prototypal inheritance models. This is just syntactic sugar. But I'm sure you'll agree that it's easier to write. Yep. Yeah, I think this is a lot easier than prototype on inheritance. I like this. Ah, the class. I love this. I actually love this. I like how they go through the hardest, most around the way. <laughs> yeah. so, Before shown as the easy. And they're like, okay, you yeah, learned that now. It shows you real appreciation for what people used to do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, it's so much easier. Don't worry about that thing that you just spent a bunch of time on. <laughs> yeah, you're never going to use it. It's out of date. <laughs> but you know how to do it now. <laughs> All right. Inheritance with class syntax. Above, we created a class to represent a person. They have a series of attrib attributes that are common to all people. In this section, we'll create our specialized teacher class, making it inherit from person using modern class syntax. This is called creating a subclass or subclassing. To create a subclass, we use the extends keyword to tell JavaScript the class we want to base our class on. So uh, you just define class teacher and then put extends person. And then if you want to add new stuff to teacher, you put in the constructor and add whatever new properties you want. But there's a little catch. Unlike old school constructor functions, where the new operator does the initialization of this to a newly allocated object, this isn't automatically initialized for a class defined by the extends keyword, i.e. the subclass. Therefore, running the above code will give an error. Uncaught reference must call super constructor in derived class before accessing this or returning from derived constructor. For subclasses, the this initial initialization to a new allocated object is always dependent on the parent class constructor, i.e. the constructor function of the class from which you're extending. Here we are extending the person class. The teacher subclass is an extension of the person class. So for teacher, the this initialization is done by the person constructor. To call the parent constructor, we have to use the super operator like so. So class teacher extends person. So inside the constructor, you just call super. Now, now this is initialized by calling. So now we can use this dot subject. Yeah, yeah. Because here it pulls an error because this uh, isn't defined. And we initialize the, the parent class. Yep. But now with super, it initializes it. So we can use this. There is no point having a subclass if it doesn't inherit properties from the parent class. It is good then that the super operator also accepts arguments for the parent constructor. Looking back to our person constructor, we can see it has the following block of code in its constructor method. First, last, age, gender, interests, and then they're all defined right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Since the super operator is actually the parent class constructor, 
passing it the necessary arguments of the parent class constructor will also initialize the parent class properties in our subclass, thereby inheriting it. So here, uh, constructor, we call all the properties we want to add to teacher. And in super, we only call the properties that are in the class that we're extending teacher from. And then we define the new properties under super. Now, when we instantiate teacher object instances, we can call methods and properties defined on both teachers and person as we expect. Let Snape equal new teacher, first name service, last name Snape, 58, you know, uh, interests are potions and dark arts and what would five be? Grade. I put that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so Snape.greeting would put out hi, I'm service. Snape.farewell would put service has left the building. Bye for now. Snape.age would uh, show 58 and Snape.subject would show dark arts. Yeah, it was a good it was a good guy even if it was into dark magic. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Eight years <Yeah>. later <laughs> or whenever. <Yeah. laughs> like we did the teachers. We could create other subclasses of person to make them more specialized without modifying the base class. So if we wanted to do student, we would just do class, student, extends person, and then add anything Ooh. we wanted to add to the student class. This is just this is just Java, honestly. Like yeah. everything I'm saying now is just Java. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> Note: You can find this example on GitHub as all right. Getters and setters. There may be times when we want to change the values of an attribute in the classes we create, or we don't know what the final value of an attribute will be. Using the teacher example, we may not know what subject the teacher will teach before we create them, or the subject may change between terms. We can handle such situa situations with getters and setters. Let's enhance the teacher class with getters and setters. The class starts the same as it was last time we looked at it. Getters and setters work in pairs. A getter returns the current value of the variable and its corresponding setter changes the value of the variable to the one it defines. The modified teacher class looks like this. So, uh, starts off the same class teacher extends person constructor you have all the properties from person plus the new ones you want to add for teacher you have to call super with uh, with all the properties from the person class and then you call the new sub you define the new subjects and then get subject return the subject and then you set subject new subject yeah it's just it's like you use the like sets just uses like change the the like the variable that's within so yeah you, yeah we use it to change subjects new subject we need to change a uh, subject new subject then yeah. this return is when we want to like use it somewhere then we can just use get so we can use get to like we want to use it somewhere the new value then we just call get we call mm -hmm. get function so, in our class above, we have a getter and setter for the subject property. We use underscore to create a separate value in which to store our name property. Without using this convention, we would get errors every time we called get or set. At this point, to show the current value of the underscore subject property of the Snape object, we can use the snape.subject getter method. To assign a new value to the subject property, we can use the snape.subject equals new value uh, setter method. The example below shows the two features in action. So this is the default value, snape.subject. Uh, you log it, it would return dark arts. If we wanted to change the value, we would do snape.subject and just equal to whatever we want it to be. So here it's the string balloon animals. It sets uh, subject to balloon animals. And then if we check it again and see if it matches the new value, uh, it would return balloon animals. Yeah. Note, you can find this example on GitHub as ES25 getter setters HTML. See it live also. So what is the purpose of using a getter? Um, 
I think, um, okay, it makes it easier for you to like change like the, the constructor, the variables for the constructor. Instead of calling the variable itself, you just call the, um, the get, get um, the, to change the variable, you just call the set method. Then you wanted the, the, the variable you've changed, use the get method to call it whenever you need it. So if you had something like a profile and you want to change the name or yeah, you just you just call the set methods. You can yeah, you set, set method to change method. that particular right. Then you when you don't need it, when you need to use it, then you call well, the get well, method. Doesn't sorry, doesn't that do the same thing even if you don't have a setter and getter? Like if you um, if you didn't have a setter and getter, could you still take snake dot subject equals balloon animals and it would still change it? No, if you don't have if you there, it will throw an error. Let's, let's try it. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's break this code. Yeah, the best way. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me go let's back and... Okay, let's break this code. <laughs> no, I think we can, you, can, you can use it um, on console. Let's use, let's use the browser oh, yeah, console. I'll just yeah, do it on the console. Well, I mean, you can use it if you set... like So if you did Snape, right? But the problem is, is you're not going to have Snape. You're going to have like 5,000 uh, different profiles. So then you run to the word that this keyword probably went to, right? But you can't can't exactly call it unless you create a variable specifically created. Oh, uh, first, uh, you have to you have to first place the you have to place the uh, person method first, the person class. Sorry, then you place the uh, okay. Let's let's do this. Sure, and do then this. if we. First line. Where's the person? There's a person method. So now if we do snape dot subject okay. dark arts and if we try snape equal to animals. So just look at the Snape object and see if it changed to balloon animals. Yeah. I mean, it obviously worked, but then again, like most of your functions aren't going to be specifically for one person. They're going to be for five yeah. thousand persons, mm -hmm. or you're going to be for multiple people, right? So try to try to create a function that does that and see if it works for that Snape object specifically. Okay, so what do we want to do? Create a function that that just takes an object, and it, uh, I guess uh, I mean we can be very specific, right? Like, so this object, uh, we know that whatever object we're giving it will have a a subject one, right? So just change the subject name to you know whatever's in the. I mean, you guys, you take two parameters. First is the object parameter, and the second would be like what you want to change. Yeah. So. And then what we'd want to do is change the. Okay, so uh, let's create the snape. So it'd be, I guess, object. Dot, I mean, within the function, it'd be object. Dot name. Yeah. Second, you know, whatever. Object. Dot subject. Sorry. Object. Dot subject. Right, but when using variables, don't you have to use? Can you use dot notation with variables and objects? Oh, good point. Uh, yeah. If we know exactly what it's called. Oh I yeah. What, yeah. what are you guys doing there? Because I, I need to understand what you guys are doing. Yeah, it wouldn't work with dots. So, well, I guess it would work with dots. So, I don't know. Hmm. Well, I guess then, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> what do we want? We just want to change it. Sub? To, you want to yeah, break the code. Yeah, equal sub. Shake it equal to sub, yeah, the, whatever it's going to be. And so, if I Do you want to give that, your function a name? Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> function, I'll just call it change. And then, you got function misspelled. Yes, I do. Thank you. An object, sub, and then... We want to change equal to sub. 
right? And then we call change, put in, well, just put in Snape, right? Yeah. yeah. And then whatever we want to change it to is. Change it back to like dark arts. Yeah. Cause you, you've already changed it to balloon animals. Oh, help if I can spell. Uh, yeah, I, I run into the same issue. <laughs> um, all right. Now look at Snape, see if anything changed. Yeah. What I try, what I get trying to do? I thought we were trying to break the code. <laughs> no, I was trying to to figure out what the purpose of the of getter. a getter and setter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It looks like it's working, like it's doing what a getter and setter does. Yeah, you, without you just it. use it to like change value. Change, use it to change the change the constructors. Like, no, sorry, the values um, parameters from so like the constructors. That's like, that's that's, that's the main function. So, so huh? rather than create, like rather than create like one function outside that does all that, you have something within the object, so it's like... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that, that changes yeah. the value. So it does I see more what, like which is in your work. You're automating the work, so you just call the function, and voila, you're done. Okay, so if we just put it in the original... If we put getters and setters in the class, we don't and have to worry about trying to create and, a yes, function yeah. that does yeah, do. each change. Yeah, like that's most of the time, like most of the time, you create you create um each you, you create get, getter and setter for each each variable each parameter. So sometimes even if you have like about ten, that means mm -hmm. you have two two for each. You have about twenty twenty um get and set um methods. Okay. Or, yeah. So that's like you do it for each parameter single. Like you do it for one parameter each. You don't do it for like. You don't combine anything. You get, so you you get have, you my question combine. is, so you wouldn't have a get... Can you scroll back up? Um, yeah, sorry. For a sec. So you would only have one get subject, and then you would have to do another one for get underscore grade and get underscore first? Yep. That's a lot of code if you wanted to change yep. everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, have to miss, you have to miss your work, though. So, so you, when you want to change it, you just know you just have to call it get it. Finish when you want to change your um, refer back to the variable, you don't have to like um, worry about anything, just go to get the set method, right? But it's still only calling one key. If you wanted to change all the keys, that would be a now. What I was saying is, would you need a get and set for every single different key that's in that object? Yep, yes. Mm -mm. Okay, I'm just I'm struggling with it for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I mean no, I understand. No, I, I get what you're saying. What? No, I've used it. why it's more easier for me to understand because I've used it in Java, so it's just different syntax here, but it's still the same meaning. So let's. So, um, okay. Well, Google's our friend, so let's see yeah, okay. what Google has to say. Um, I think there's, there's I think there's, there's more exactly to it. Exactly what I was looking up on I right now. I think um, there's more to it though. I think there's more to it, but let's see. Okay, I've been defined. In, uh, so let's see. Well, the basic value is just to change and set, change and uh, call the call the changes. That's all. But we can see some other things. Though. I think I've, I've read this particular article before. By using we have achieved the one pillar of OOPs. Oh, Commit. Let's see. Let's see. So what does the article say? Uh, that I just realized that was for Java, so let me put. No, but the meaning is just the, the main issue here. Yeah, just try to get the meaning. Well, you can. These two keywords to find access. Yeah. So. Let's look at this. Why would someone use getter and setter instead of methods in JavaScript? 
easier of use in code cleanliness mostly. In some cases, you may have a library that you installed from NPM or you got some code that is written by someone else and expects a generic object with properties, not methods, as input, and you don't have the time or motivation to change the library code. Side note, this is a use case, but not the use case as a proxy object would be better suited for this. An even better use case would be observing changes to properties. You see getters and setters can do, can do execute logic while getting or setting a value. This means that you could trigger changes or events or code when a certain property is changed or maybe increment a few counters when a property is accessed. I, okay, now I see how that is helpful. Why you... Now, the true power of getters and setters are reflected when paired with decorators. You could observe any property on any object simply by decorating it with a decorator, which will change the property into a getter and setter and execute its own logic while these basic operations are done. I actually lost my area. I was trying to like understand um, decorators on, on Python. Like, ah, that's it took me off. Took me off. Okay, so, we'll, so you you get the point now, but okay. And then he goes on to say, but then again, you could do this with methods too. So my first statement stands: readability and ease of use. So it seems so like getters and setters, in like one place, rather than like a function that uses everything. I yeah, I guess I I'm with Pat here. Like I get it. Like. <sighs> I get it. Yeah, but like I, I understand what they're doing, but we're I'm having yeah, we're having a little trouble understanding exactly why yeah, we want to shown, use them. Yeah, they haven't shown a use case of why you need to use getters and setters over I try to go Google that just go with the meaning. Try to go like the yeah, like okay. instances instances where like getters and setters actually um um more um So, leave Stack Overflow. So maybe it has something to do with the mutability of an object. Can you make an object immutable? Yes, by doing something to make. Yeah, it there's a there's a method called object dot freeze that if you use, I'm pretty sure it's called dot freeze. But if you use that on an object, it changes it so you can't. Uh, it's so it's immutable. I wonder if a setter will change an immutable frozen, object. Yeah, a frozen yeah. object. Maybe. Okay. okay. I mean, I guess the same way you use const to create an object and still be able to access properties and change stuff it doesn't make it completely like, as opposed to if it's like a, a number variable or string variable, you can't change it on const. But okay, so we. Uh, this looks like it. Uh, has an example of why you might want to use it. So here's one. If you allow field access like shape.x equals 90, you can't add logic uh, in future to validate the data. So if you want the, this value to be less than 100, you, there's no way to check that, I guess, without getters or setters. But with getters and setters, you can add logic into it to make sure that this property value is less than 100. Okay, so another reason is for accessing fields outside your class, you will have to mark them public, protected, or default, and thus you lose control when data is very much internal to the class, breaking encapsulation, and in general, OOPS methodology. So I guess it keeps the, all the code, like in, all the properties inside the class instead of having it publicly available which uh, is probably a security risk. It's All right. I probably just need to like get to higher level thinking when it comes to this because yeah, there's maybe, a lot of terminology uh, they've thrown in there that I have no idea what it means. <laughs> 
let's keep reading and see if maybe they'll later on we'll explain why we'd want to okay. use getters okay, a little more. Can you guys try to like um, change after after you um, initialize um, after you initialize um, a class? Try to change without using getters and setters. You know th th that's what we did here. Because uh, here, if I did right here, I created the person class and then I created the teacher class, but I didn't add any getters or setters. And then right here, I changed the subject from dark arts to balloon animals. And then I checked okay. and then uh, you see that the subject was changed to balloon animals. And okay. then here I created a function to do the same thing called change, which uh, takes the object and the whatever you want to change the subject to. And then it also worked because I checked Snape again, and now the subject is back to dark arts from balloon animals. So you can change it without getters and setters. Yeah, but. you can. Well, I think there's more to eat, I guess. There's, there's, some, there's, some, there's something I, I, I just forget. Yeah. yeah I, um, I saw what Adam just posted a uh, page in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it has me... to do with encapsulation, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's security is more is secure than using just normal function. I think it's more it's more secure. I, than using I think it's function. confusing to us because it's more OOP, and that's something I, like, I'm familiar it's, with, it's, but not yeah. like I, not that I actively try. To, to, yeah. Well, like, that's what that out. one Stack Overflow uh, article was saying that uh, when you access properties for, with methods and like that, uh, it makes them public, and with getters and setters, it keeps them. Uh, inside the class, right? It has to do with encapsulation. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, garbage. Security so, is more secure than using the more function. Mm -hmm. I think I think the main reason it's getting me because on the the MDN tutorial, like where you're using a getter and setter, it's the same code as not using a getter and setter. Yeah, but yeah, looking into it a little more, I think you can see why in the future we might want to use it but like for these simple examples so you it didn't use it. really make sense for why we would want to use it so you are going to use it do make sense then Let's right but, it, but what i'm saying is the syntax is no different than not using a getter and setter yeah yeah true true true, true. it's only calling, different in the constructor it, yeah when you're calling it is different okay so I'm pr actually probably going to read this after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Cause... It was just real quick. Like, there was the, the, I think, like, the top half, it showed a couple examples and, like, a, a couple reasons why you would actually use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because so like, I'm and, actually going to bookmark this. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I actually want to understand you, it a little uh, better. I don't know. Why did you send the link? The link to. It's, the in, link? The, um, it's in the chat. Oh, it's in the chat. For, yeah. In the Zoom chat. I don't know where else to go. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Zoom chat. I can't mm. find it. I don't know. Uh,. Here, do you want to, this is the URL, if you want to okay. write okay. it down real quick. Let me type it down. Yeah, that, the, it's throwing me off in the MDN. It's like, all right, so in normal learning, before you learn getters and setters, it's like, hey, if you want to change the value of a key, you type in snape.subject equals balloon animals. Yeah. But now that you put a getter or a setter in there, what you need to type is name dot subject equals balloon animals. <laughs> <laughs> if the syntax looked different, it would make more sense to me. Yeah. yeah no, but like the call, when you call it, it's different. It's like no calling. They're not using the name. It's just just uh, it's just a subject, right? No, you still got to use the 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 name before the subject. I think yeah, but you're not using problem. get or say. You're not using sub subject. Yeah, you're you using snake dot subject. Instance, use the instance with subject. Yeah. So it's, yeah, so it's the same thing whether you use a getter or a setter or don't. But I think what happens is with the uh, getters and setters, the setter changes it, so that's that keeps it inside the class instead of doing it outside of a class. Good. So it's security. how you would do without it. All right. It's yeah. So like all this security jargon is like way above. Yeah, what I've that's learned so far. So it's just yeah, confusing. we won't be learning any of that till like way towards the end of our coding journey <laughs> well because the problem is like so that class extends like all that stuff kind of comes into play with react as well right like yeah but like 
I, I think more frustrating is that that yeah, classes were specifically like to try to get people who are comfortable with like Python and, and Java to jump over and go like, hey, we we have classes too, but they don't work the same way as yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Java is like the most is one of the most secure system. So that's. that's you spend like them. three months coding something for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you have to define yeah, everything. Like, everything, 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 like you have everything, to define everything you yeah. use. Like you have to define it specifically. Like it's not as if you just write var and you define any variable. Nah, you use it. It took me forty-five minutes to do fizz buzz on that thing, and I never <laughs> wanted to go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could we could keep going. I'm just I'm sorry to throw everybody. Oh no, no, no. I'm a it was a good question because I didn't yeah. really <laughs> get what the diff what uh, getters and setters were for. <laughs> were used for anyway so now I, at least i kind of understand why we'll want to use them in the future but you understand them better the more you use them and the more you read on them so that's yeah that's i think it once i read that article i'll have since a little you, better understanding you're informed about them not like when you see anything on them you just like you've been interested because you don't really get the point why you need to use them and you get to like read more on them and all of that so with time you should all right, I'm gonna keep going. It's more, it's more for security, though. It's security, yeah. Yeah. All right, so back on track. <laughs> when would you use inheritance in JavaScript? Particularly after this last article, you might be thinking, whew, this is complicated. Well, you're right. <laughs> Prototypes and inheritance represent some of the most complex aspects of JavaScript. But a lot of JavaScript's power and flexibility comes from its object structure and inheritance and it is worth understanding how it works. In a way, you use inheritance all the time. Whenever you use various features of a web API or methods slash properties defined on a built-in browser object that you call on your strings, arrays, etc., you are implicitly using inheritance. In terms of using inheritance in your own code, you probably won't use it often, especially to begin with and in small projects. It is a waste of time to use objects and inheritance just for the sake of it when you don't need them. But as your code bases get larger, you are more likely to find a need for it. If you find yourself starting to create a number of objects that have similar features, then creating a generic object type to contain all the shared functionality and inheriting those features and more specialized object types can be convenient and useful. Because of the way JavaScript works, with the prototype chain, etc., the sharing of functionality between objects is often called delegation. Specialized objects delegate functionality to a generic object type. When using inheritance, you are advised to not have too many levels of inheritance and to keep careful track of where you define your methods and properties. It is possible to start writing code that temporarily modifies the prototypes of built-in browser objects, but you should not do this unless you have a really good reason. Too much inheritance can lead to endless confusion and endless pain when you try to debug such code. Yeah, that'd be hard trying to follow the prototype chain. <laughs> trying to figure out if it's on uh, we, we proto like or prototype or. We have about 100 modules. Like you go through everything, about like 10,000 lines of code, like in each one. Oh, yeah. You, you that just go crazy. Definitely you go crazy. Like I'll, I'll just go crazy. I'll go crazy for that. All right. Ultimately, objects are just another form of code reuse, like functions or loops with their own specific roles and advantages. If you find yourself creating a bunch of related variables and functions and want to track them all together and package them neatly, an object is a good idea. Objects are ve also very useful when you want to pass a collection of data from one place to another. Both of, these thing both of these things can be achieved without use of constructors or inheritance. If you only need a single instance of an object, then you're probably better off just using an object literal, and you certainly don't need inheritance. Alternatives for extending the prototype chain. In JavaScript, there are several different ways to extend the prototype of an object aside from what we've shown above. To find out uh, more about the other ways, visit our inheritance in the prototype chain article. Summary. This article has covered the remainder of the core OOJS theory and syntax that we think you should know. At this point, you should understand JavaScript objects and OOP basics. Prototypes and prototypal inheritance, how to create classes, constructors, and object instances, add features to classes, and create subclasses that inherit from other classes. In the next article, we'll look at how to work with JavaScript object notation, JSON, and common data exchange format written using JavaScript objects. Sweet. All right. Let's take so, a break. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for a break since I just wanted to finish this morning. All right. Let